Hey, good to see you. So um, you clicked on this video because most likely you have commitment issues or you know someone who has commitment issues and you're trying to really understand what's going on here. I'm glad you did because you see, a lot of people don't understand other people who have commitment issues. They just tend to label them as selfish and then sort of move on with their lives. And if you have ever dated someone who has commitment issues, you can really attest to the frustration that you would feel whenever you've dated that person. And so this video seeks to just throw some more light on, you know, why commitment issues occur, how to spot them in your partner. And then I'll be telling you the truth behind commitment issues. I mean, is it really the fear of commitment or is there something much more we need to have a conversation about? So thank you so much for joining me on this video. I'll be right back. Welcome back. So the concept of commitment issues usually come from um, romantic relationships, okay? Where one partner just doesn't seem to be on the same wavelength or seem to be giving of themselves more uh, or equally as their partner does. And it brings a lot of conflict um, in that relationship. Even though commitment is a broad term, it generally comes down to dedicating yourself to something for a long time, be it a job, a business, or a relationship. But of course, for the purposes of today's video, we'll only narrow the conversation down to relationships. So how exactly do you know you have commitment issues? Number one, you don't wanna date anyone seriously. You know, you meet people, they're fun, you're with them, they actually believe that they're in a relationship with you, but in your mind, you know it's not that deep. You're there for a moment, you're having fun for as long as it's still fun. And as uh, soon as you sort of um, have had your fun, you move on. And usually this leaves the other person in a serious state of heartbreak. Um, they'll probably cuss you out if they realize that you're not as hurt as they are about losing the relationship and you just pretty much move on unscathed. And then there's also the aspect of you just sort of sabotaging the relationship when you realize that it's getting too serious too soon you know you completely walk away from that and you tell them this is not what you're looking for number two you don't think about the future of the relationship now for most regular relationships after a while of being together you start to think into the future about how you're going to carry on what you're going to do you actually start making future plans together now for people who have commitment issues it doesn't come up in the conversation at all um, they do not think about the future they think of the now and the relationship that they currently have and um, you know so far as they continue to enjoy this person's time and um, space and um, you know, love, they would stay. But the moment future plans and future conversations come up, you'll find them withdrawing completely. They don't want to have anything to do with it and they would rather just, you know, not talk about it at all. If you've ever found yourself in a relationship with someone who started to freak you out the minute they started talking about marriage and children and having houses and cars together, then you might be having serious commitment issues as well. Now, before we go any further, let me just say that today's video is sponsored by Passion Air. It's a Ghanaian airline that flies you internally from one Ghanaian city to another. If ever you're there for business or pleasure, check out Passion Air and you won't be disappointed. This video is also sponsored by Lemonade Finance. Now, it's a remittance service for people in the UK and Canada who want to send money to people who live in Ghana, Nigeria or Kenya. It's a very easy way to do so because you send money for free. Yeah, absolutely no transaction free. Just look for the money you want to send and with the click of a button, you have sent it free of charge. Now, if you use my special promo code, Jessica OS, you also get a 10% cash back um, on your first transaction. And so that's a really good reason to use it. Go out there, try out Lemonade Finance and let me know. And if you're worried because you live somewhere in the USA or other parts of Europe and you're, you can't have access to it, but you have loved ones in these countries I mentioned, no worries. A little bird tells me Lemonade Finance is coming to you soon. Number three, you spend a lot of time questioning the relationship. So maybe your issue has nothing to do with having, you know, um, issues with planning for the future or, you know, you genuinely love this person that you're with. 
but you tend to find yourself questioning the relationship a lot. Do they really love me? Will they really stay? Are they the best fit for me? You know, is someone better out there who will make me happier? Am I ready for this? Do I want this to work? I mean, do they really love me? The questions can go on and on and on. I mean, there's nothing wrong with asking questions like those or these in itself, but when your questions and your obsession with the questions begin to truly interrupt with the natural flow of your relationship and begins to cause emotional distress, then it may be a sign that you have a fear of commitment. So number four, you do not want to make plans. Now, <laughs> have you found yourself on a Friday night postponing plans with this person in hopes of getting better plans? for the night, you know? So even though you're dating them and they're like, oh, you know, let's hang out at this time at this place. You're like, oh, you know, I have a couple of work things to get through. Depends on how early I finish. And this seems to be a constant thing where you're constantly giving excuses, um, you know, and, and not being definite about arrangements with them. And purposely because you're hoping that there's something else out there for you to do, then you may be having commitment issues there as well. And it's also a sign that you do not like them enough, right? Perhaps you're not committed because this person is just a nice person. They're good to you, but you have nothing sexual going. There's no chemistry, you know, and you're just sort of going along because you don't want to be lonely, but you're not looking for anything long-term. You're definitely having some commitment issues there as well. And finally, and one of the biggest signs that you also have commitment issues is because you're not feeling emotionally attached to the person that you're dating at the moment. So, um, Everything just seems so superficial, all right? You don't want it to go deep. You don't like them enough to even sort of introduce them to the people that matter to you. You know, it's all very superficial. You'll have a good time with them. You'll get sexually intimate if they'll allow, um, or if you'll allow yourself to, but it's really not that deep. There's nothing substantial happening below the surface. And this is a relationship you know in your heart of hearts that you're not going to take very far. Obviously, you're having commitment issues with this person that you are in a relationship. Now, these are the signs that immediately come to mind, five of them that I want to share with you today. So in conclusion, this is what I really feel. Do people who tout or say that they have commitment issues actually have commitment issues? Or is it a matter of not wanting to stay committed to the person they are in a relationship with? I personally think it's the latter because, um, you know, I tell you a story about a gentleman I went to school with. You know, he always used to talk about how he'll never get married. You know, there's no point. To total waste of time, you know, and he was an eligible bachelor, handsome guy, he got everything going for him, you know, um, and, you know, right after uni, it was so obvious that he was going to get a great job and just have an amazing life. And he, he didn't want to share it with anyone. Needless to say, six months later, after school, he was married. When I heard the story, I, my jaw just dropped and I realized that, let's call him Ben. Ben didn't want to get married to the girl he was dating in university at the time. And that was the reason why he was so against marriage. And then when he left uni, he met a woman who made it worth his while, a woman who made him want to give up being a bachelor and literally tie his soul to. And so when I hear people say they have commitment issues, um, I tend to roll my eyes and say, yeah, right. Because I feel like Nobody has commitment issues. They just haven't met that one person who makes them want to give it all up. You know what I mean? And feel free to share your opinions on that as well. My two cents, really. Thanks for watching. Catch you in the next video. And that should be really soon. Cheers.